YouTube, what's up? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this paper strip lodge transition effect. I guess that's probably the best way to describe it. Basically a bunch of strips of paper come up and then it transfers to the clip and then they kind of go away. So it just like fills the screen with like pieces of paper that are ripped, like screenshots or photos that you took for your music video. Before we start, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe because what we're doing is a thing called Tutorial Mist. It's where I upload one video every day all December. So 31 videos in 31 days. So you definitely don't wanna miss any of those tutorials. Also, if you could go down and like and comment because that really helps out uh, pushing my videos. I've been doing one video every day for 17 days now and we're already starting to see kind of some of the growth from just uploading daily so you know if you want to help your boy out uh, go ahead and go do that also today is the last day where all three packs are 20 percent off and the ultimate bundle is also 25 percent off so we're going to be using one of those packs today in here it's called the paper rips and folds pack and that's 25 percent off right now so if you want to snag that before it goes off sale the link will be in the description also i've been live streaming every day like kind of while i'm editing the video and then like in the upload process and normally once i'm done editing the video we kind of go over your guys's music videos so maybe I'll make that like a once a week thing where we like have a stream just dedicated to like watching some of your music videos. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on what day I'm thinking yet. Give me a suggestion down below. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Just everyone hops in, supports each other, and we just watch each other's music videos. Also, if you can't afford the pack or just want to try it out, I'm going to have a little sample pack that has maybe one element from like every pack free of charge on my website as well. So just go over there and go to all products and then find the free pack just so you can test it out. And if you don't want to grab the whole pack, you can just follow along and still learn a cool effect. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's get into Photoshop and Premiere and get this effect on. All right, so first off, you're gonna either want some photos or if you want, you can just go into Premiere and screenshot like certain clips from your music video. So say you wanted like this still to be paper effect, you could uh, just screenshot it and save it somewhere where you find it. I already went ahead and did all that so we don't have to send screenshot. I would say anywhere from like five to seven is probably good to fill up the whole screen. Obviously, the more you have, the longer the transition is gonna be. I went ahead and did seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag all seven of those in here. You can do this with photos as well. So it doesn't have to just be screen grabs from the music video, but I just decided to do the Coco music video that just came out. I just like the scenes and how they look. Doesn't really have anything to do with the music video itself. So once you import the photos, what you need is some kind of paper rip overlays. Uh, I went ahead and went into my paper rips and folds pack and then went to paper rips. And I'm gonna use some of these short ones and probably some of the long ones. So what you do is you just drag one in for example, we're gonna do short one here. And again, if you wanna snag these overlays, they're gonna be linked in the description. So once you drag it in, you're gonna wanna find the photo that you want. I think this one looks pretty cool for this. So you just drag it over the clip and then create clipping mask and it's just gonna be showing the outline of the paper rip. And then on the image layer, you can go to a blending mode. I use screen a lot. You can use a bunch of different ones. Like, like if you want some cool effect, you can do like divide. Like, so just play around with whatever you want. I'm gonna use screen because it just looks like the most traditional, like it was kind of printed on there and then just ripped up. And then you can uh, scale your clip however you want, scale it up a little bit more. So his body kind of follows that curve, if that makes sense. I think that looks pretty cool. And since we're working in Photoshop, it's really nice between Premiere and Photoshop, you can actually just drag the Photoshop file into Premiere. So I'm just gonna place the rips where I actually want the transition to go. So there's less work to do um, later on. So I'm gonna, started off something like here. I'd recommend the first few to be like kind of big and taking up a, a decent amount of the screen and then the last few to like be a little smaller. And then we're just gonna look through and see which one we want next. So I ended up liking this image and I'm gonna go and drag another one of those overlays on. Uh, I think short three looks cool. The short ones are better for getting more of the image in there and the long ones are better for just like getting a little strip of it because like obviously they're shorter so they're like a little bit wider so you can get a little bit more in and then the long ones uh, just kind of get like a little bit of the photo. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then create clipping mask again over short three and then just move your image wherever you want it. I think something like that looks cool. And then again, go into screen and then control click on both of these so you can select them both at once and move them. I'm gonna have it angled in this way a little bit this time and maybe something like that. Cool, so now we got two done and then I'm gonna choose my next one. I think I'm gonna do one of the jet ski ones. I like the one from overhead, I think that's cool. And while you're working, you can turn off the layers that you already did if it makes it a little easier for you, but just keep that in mind when you're like placing them. And then I'm gonna use a long one this time because like, you know, you don't really need to take up wide, you just need to take up length. I think something like the ninth one looks good to me. And then I'm just gonna flip this image like this and then drag it over along nine, go to screen, reframe it to fit. I think something like that looks pretty cool. Create a clipping mask and there we are. And then turning back on these layers so I can see where I'm at, make sure you selected both of them and you can move it wherever you want. I think I'm gonna keep it somewhere right here. In my opinion, to do the effect, I think covering up like the middle first, like so like the viewer's attention's like on the effect and then covering up the sides is cool. But you can like move in if you want, like you could do whatever you want. So like you could say like you could put the first one here, second one here, third one, fourth one, and kind of just have a collapse. For this, I'm gonna use like cover the middle. Also, I forgot to mention, 
I did get, I mean, I've seen this effect a lot of places, but recently I got inspired to do the tutorial from this music video by Lil Boof, and it's directed by Kyler Bolomi. Hopefully I said that right. But yeah, he has a, he has a similar effect here. I was like, oh, that's cool. I can do that with my pack. So that's where I got the idea. I just want to let you guys know. Shout out Kyler. He's a dope director. And then I think I'm going to do this one next. Again, just finding one that I like. I think this one with the flat edge, because I'm going to use it for the left-hand side, is perfect for this. And then again, just clipping mask, dragging it to the screen, and then framing it how we want. I'm going to drag it over here. And I think I'm going to make it a lot larger. I'm also going to drag it over. So you can play with like which ones cover what. Then I'm just going to move. Then I'm just going to move this one over a little bit. I just kind of tweak it as I go. And you don't have to cover every inch of the... Uh, the video clip it doesn't really matter that much i think uh it's kind of a cool effect to not do it sometimes and again just fixing it to however you like and then i think this one would be really cool because we have like a little gap here i'm just gonna do just the uh iceberg i think that would be a pretty cool uh use of it so i'm gonna try to find something that would uh fit that paper wise this one seems to work i'm gonna flip it this way scale it down and then make a clipping mask again and we can do something like that go to screen Turning on all the images again. And then if you're having a hard time moving it because it's behind stuff, you can hold shift and use your arrow keys to move it. I found that's pretty helpful. That's looking pretty cool. I think we gotta, we gotta make it a little smaller. I think that fits pretty well. The order you do it in does not determine the order it pops up in Premiere or the order it uh, overlaps. So you can kind of visualize it that way if you want in Photoshop. But like I said, you can always change it up later. Basically what we're doing is just importing each little strip at once into uh, Premiere. And I got one more here. So yeah, that's pretty much filling up the whole thing. I'm not realizing I probably could use a larger variety of clips because uh, a lot of them are all from the same scene. But it doesn't matter if you're using this like an intro or something before like one scene comes in, it could be cool to just take it all from one scene and then like introduce a scene that way. So after you're done with that, what I like to do is click on the top layer and then hold shift and click on the bottom one, hold control J and then click a group. And then that way you can just type this one like save or something and then just turn it off. That way when we go ahead and merge these layers, cause we're gonna merge each paper rip with the image that it's attached to. So just clicking the photo rip and the image and then going to merge layers and just doing that for each one. And the reason we're doing this is so we can apply effects to both of them pretty easily. And then I'm gonna go through each one and convert them to smart objects. What that does is basically it makes it so when you apply the like the grain effects or any effects to it, you can change it from the object itself and not have to like control Z and like keep on like just testing. So for example, this right hand one right here, we can go to noise and add noise because I like doing that to these and you can drag it and say like I, I made it 41 or then I think that's like way too much. You can go here and just double click on the noise part and drag it to whatever you think looks good. I think for the sake of this, we're going to do something around 10. I think I'm going to use monochromatic here. The monochromatic makes it black and white grain and the other one's uh, color if you don't have it selected. And then we can go to edit image adjustments and then go to photo filter and you can choose any of these photo filters uh basically just like adds a color to the image i'm going to use sepia and then just drag it to whatever you think looks good you can go crazy with it or you can just add a little bit or whatever i think it's cool because it adds like a little off-white color to the paper it just makes it look a little used or whatever and then just remember that number so you can apply it to all of them and then what i'm going to do is just go through all of them and add the same amount of noise and the same amount of like around 10 grain and 35 of the photo filter so i'll get back to you when i'm done doing that and then once you apply all the effects to every photo, I think that really sells the uh, the look of the photo being actually printed on paper and stuff. So I think that's key. Obviously, you don't have to do it, but uh, I think it's just a little extra step that makes it look a lot better. And then obviously, um, maybe don't use the warm photo filter on like a thing where there's like ice and stuff. It's all up to you or whatever, but I think I chose probably like not the best video footage to do it to. But either way, it's just an example. And then you can just save it as a Photoshop file. So just go file, save as, and then make sure it says PSD. And then once you're in Premiere, just go into the project section and double click that and then drag in or open up the Photoshop file. And then instead of merge all layers, you want to go to individual layer. And then if the uh, duplicated images are not already unchecked, make sure you uncheck them so it doesn't import two of each, the the ones that we have in the, uh, the folder. If you save the Photoshop folder with the eyeball unchecked, so like they're not visible, it shouldn't have them checked automatically. But if they are, just make sure you do that. And click OK. And then what it does is it imports each photo as a separate layer, which is real nice. And then what you want to do is just find a clip that you want to transition between what we can do is just mark that where the frame starts and then just choose the one you want to pop out first i'd recommend a bigger one and then i'm gonna make the first one stand a little bit longer than all the other ones so two frames and then i'm just gonna go here and after that i'm gonna have each frame last two frames after that so the first one's gonna last four frames and then this one's gonna last two 
and then you can just like continue to drag so you can see what it looks like then you just keep on dragging them in however you want i think i'm gonna have this jet ski one play next but i want the jet ski one to be underneath the actual first layer that we have up so i'm just making sure it's below the one that i want it to be below so for example, I drag it below both of these. So it's be behind both of these. And then I'm gonna have the left-hand side one pop up next. And I want this one to be above everything. So just having it like that is perfect. And then after that, I want one of the right-hand ones to pop up, drag and see what that looks like. And then I'm gonna have the final right-hand side one pop up. So again, just two frames each one, and then I'm just dragging it underneath. So it should kind of look like a, like a pyramid. I mean, obviously if you want other clips to be pop up, but be below, then it won't look exactly like a pyramid. For example, like this one pops up, this one pops up, this one pops up, but it's not right here because I want it to be behind a bunch of layers. Lastly, we could drag in the glacier one. I kind of like how it looks on top, but say I wanted it to be behind everything. All you would do is just make sure that one is on the bottom. So we can, ju we can just do that for tutorial example. So now it's popping up behind there. And then what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and start having them pop away. You can either have them come in the way they came out. So the first one would be this one and then the second one would be the second shortest and then so on. But I think it looks better if you just have them kind of pop away in random order. Also, since we're exposing the title of the video, I think I'm gonna have the middle ones kind of pop away first so we can catch that right away. Like, so it drags your eye right to it, if that makes sense. So I'm just looking up here to see which ones are the middle ones. You can like look by name. So I'm gonna go two frames after this one pops up, one, two, and then I'm gonna drag them all out besides the one that I want to be able go away. So right there, and then again, going two frames and dragging them all out besides the one you want to go away. So this time I'm gonna have the glacier go away. And then after that, two frames again and have the next one go away. And then two frames and drag them all besides the one. One, two, drag the last one. And then on the last one, I'm just gonna have it last one frame. So it's not like alone by itself for two frames, just so it doesn't get lonely. And then just like that, you got a pretty sweet transition. That's like pretty simple to do. It's a little time consuming, but if you also wanted to like use the exact same paper rips in your project, you could just go to that Photoshop file and replace the images and, and not replace the paper rips. So it's kind of like a template most, once you make one. And then what I'd go ahead and do is just nest it just so you can uh, save some room on your timeline. You could, you could have done that beforehand too. You could have nested the first image and then uh, put them all in the nested sequence. So like if you didn't want to work on your timeline like that. And then if you want, you can uh, apply any effects to all of them. So you can do like a scale. So like say you wanted it to be like 102 or something, just something really slight, slowly zoom out. So I then just reset it to 100%. So like you can kind of just see it just moves a little bit. You can't even really tell, but I think it just adds a little bit cool of an effect to it. And then if you want, you can find some free sound effects or something of like paper ripping and add those just to like do a little sound design if you want just some other ideas you can if you didn't want to add grain in the photo filter in photoshop you could actually do it to the nested sequence you could just add like curves or lumetri color to the nested sequence and you can also add noise the noise will be moving but it's a it's a little bit of a time saver and you can just do it in premiere and obviously you don't have to start in photoshop you can start in premiere and do it that way like all the tools are here so you could use the crop tool and have uh you know your image cropped right around here and then put it on screen but in photoshop it makes it a lot easier so i just think that's probably the best way yeah that's enough for the effect if you made it all the way to the end of the video i really appreciate you thank you very much if you haven't already like and comment and if you're not subscribed go ahead and do so like i said today is the last day where my website is going to be 25 percent off so if you want go ahead go over there and grab yourself a pack and use the code 25 one day that will get you 25 percent off at checkout but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the video peace